What's up guys, Steve Wickham 47 here bringing you another YouTube video. Today I am here with my Microsoft E3 reactions video. Uh, it is a bit late, I actually recorded this yesterday and combined with the time zone problem and then I had work both mornings, at the morning after the conference and this morning as well so I couldn't really do it today. But I'm making it now and I'm just going to go through it kind of quick because it was pretty stacked, they had a lot added, and I've already gone through it annoyingly. The recording didn't work yesterday, but I have everything right here on my phone that I want to talk about. I had to narrow it down to about 9 or 10 games, all the biggest ones. They showed a collection of like 20, e or 20 indie games in one video, so that was pretty cool. But without any further ado, uh, let's get into it. Uh, the first thing they show that I need to talk about is obviously the most important thing coming out of this. Is the Xbox One X, formerly known as Project Scorpio, not anymore, unfortunately. I kind of prefer that name, Xbox Scorpio would have been cooler. But we have that now. It is 500 euro, or well, whatever your currency is. I think it's 500 dollars, 500 euro, 450 pounds. I mean, like people are complaining, saying it's too high, but what did you expect? It's the most powerful gaming console of all time, so it's gonna be fairly expensive like a 4k pc and a monitor would be over a thousand euro so i mean people complain too much it's out november 7th there's no exclusive games right now it's still fully compatible with all backwards compatible 360 titles and xbox one but a few of the first party games i think gears 4 and well, gears 4 was one of them i can't remember the rest and then 30 third party games are being upscaled graphically so they look really good on it I don't know, I mean, I'm probably not going to buy one because I still have my old machine over there with a 2 terabyte external hard drive, so I don't need to buy one right now. But it did look pretty tempting. And all the complicated specs you'll find online, I don't really care about specs, to be honest. It looks it looks nice. Like, all the games on this panel look amazing. Um, the first game I want to talk about is... I should know this before I start, but it's Forza 7. Uh, this is when I started watching the stream, I had to go back and watch the, my, uh, I keep saying Minecraft or Microsoft, I had to watch the Scorpio panel after, but it's Forza 7. I'm not a fan of racing games, so all I can say really is this looked pretty, they showed off a real Porsche to advertise the game, first time the Porsche was ever shown to anyone, and it looks really good, like every racing game that I've seen, it looks nice, like I just don't really have an interest in racing games, if you do, then it presumably is a must buy for you. I can't really speak on racing games. Next we had a game that really threw me off guard was Metro Exodus. I actually have that franchise chilling on my Xbox. I got it for Christmas. It was a bundle. I get both Metro games for like 16 euro. So I had to. It's too good. And I was watching. I was out of the stream at this point And my cousin texted me saying, what the fuck is this game? Use your knowledge. Tell me what it is. And I hadn't a clue until the stream ended. And I was like, or not the stream, but that little segment ended. And Metro is apparently a really good game. I've never played it. Make the trailer maybe want to play it though, which is all you can ask for. Uh, I'm actually quite excited for it. It's like an open world survival esque game with weird mutated monsters. I know the first. I think they're all set in Russia because that's where the Metro is. But um, yeah, Metro probably. I'll, there's another game I want to get to in a minute, but probably the game I'm most excited for coming out of the conference. Only two games that I saw really got me going. The rest were all like, this is cool. But these three games got me quite hyped. The next game on the list, like, eh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Like, apparently, now, I haven't seen this yet. But there was more gameplay shown at the Ubisoft conference. I don't really care about Assassin's Creed that much, to be quite honest. I've played 3 and Black Flag. And I see, saw Unity, it looked horrible. And it's just, they all look the same. Like. And even this one doesn't really look a whole lot different. It'll, it'll be a good game. As long as it doesn't launch broken. Because no Assassin's Creed game was bad except for Unity. So. As long as it doesn't launch broken it's going to be good. But whether or not it's like. Because the franchise is super stale. But unlike COD they don't even try and change it. Like COD changes and people hate it. But these guys didn't even try. So. It remains to be seen how well the game will do. I think it comes out this holiday season, I don't think it's 2018, I'm pretty sure it's a 2017 game, yeah, I mean, Assassin's Creed, you already know by now if you like it or not, so, next game we had on the list, I didn't even know about, to 
be honest, it's uh, already on PC for a while. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. It's 100 players in an arena. And Last Man Standing wins. Uh, I said this yesterday. I still haven't watched the trailer. It's underneath or above my face now as you're watching this. I think it's third person. I think it's third person. But then they showed another arena battle game called the Darwin Project. That was third person, so I'm getting probably getting the two mixed up. Darwin Project looked like this meets Overwatch. Like the art style was like Overwatch, and then the gameplay was like Battlegrounds. So mix them together, and that's what you get. That was a good game as well. But yeah, I mean, it's 100 players all fighting it out to be last man standing. That sounds incredible. I can't wait to play this. But I feel bad being the first player to die. I kind of right you out for a while. I've been waiting for ages. But I'm definitely looking to get this. I think it comes out later this year, September 2017. I'm going to link all these trailers. Or I'm going to link Xbox's channel in the description. Because that's where I got all these trailers from. And I don't want to get fucked for copyright. I'm not making any money, so I shouldn't. But yeah, I'm going to link the trailers anyway, just in case. And go watch them. Because I'm probably not doing a great job of explaining some of the more niche games. Because it's challenging. Like These clips are only a little bit of length. And I haven't watched them in three days. So... Next game on the list, State of Decay 2. This was shown last year on State of Decay. I first played it when it came out in 2013, when it was kind of mediocre. Apparently it got a lot better with the Xbox One port and things like that. But it looks really good. It looks like an improvement. It looks graphically incredible. Uh, there's a dude like a clean ripped apart in the trailer, so it looks gorier than I remember. Um, I think special zombies were hinted to because one of them was like a massive bruiser. I mean... There's a big zombie shaped hole in my heart that Left 4 Dead has left because that franchise. I think E3's finished now and Left 4 Dead 3 still didn't show up, so. Rest in peace, Left 4 Dead 3. But we have State of Decay 2 now to fill the multiplayer zombies game void in my heart that Call of Duty zombies just can't quite fill. But. No, great looking game. Um, like I've said, you need a zombie game in your life. And this one could probably be the best multiplayer one I've ever seen, to be honest. Like, because Zombies on COD is a mode, not a game. So, it remains to be seen if it will beat Left 4 Dead 2 as the best zombie game ever made. But, we'll see. Next up, we had a game that was hyped for years. First shown at E3 2014. That's three years ago. That's a long fucking time in video game world. That's a long time. Like, we get three Call of Duty games in that time. Crackdown 3, graphically it's actually a downgrade, I didn't even know it was until I read something after and then I went and watched it back, the graphics got chitter, they like downgraded them I think, but I mean, the game, it looked really fun, they had Terry Crews for the trailer, and that's fucking hilarious, Terry Crews is brilliant, Terry please bring him in as Doomfist, but, yeah, it, I don't know if the game will be any good, to be honest. It has the most risk of failure out of the games that I have on this list. I, I want it to be good because it looked really fun. The destruction engine looks great. Just Cause, Just Cause 2 more so was always really fun. And the destruction engine is only at its fullest in multiplayer. Single player doesn't have unlimited destruction. Multiplayer does. If it's good, it could be a great multiplayer game. But if it's bad, that community is going to die that quick. So... We'll see. If it launches broken, it's a dead game. There's no hope for it. Next on the list, we had a sequel to a indie platformer that came out in 2015, Ori and the Blind Forest. This game is called Ori and the Will of the Wisps. It's a side-scrolling platformer. If you like that game, then you already know. This one looks amazing. It's like an art book come to life. The animation is incredible. They got a pianist, piano player, in case you misheard me and thought I said pianist. To come out and play some from the score live, which is mental. Like, that's mental effort going into a small indie game like that. Well, I don't even know if it's small anymore, but it's still an indie game, as far as I know. And it looked great. Like, I probably will pick this up. I didn't really play the first one, but if I see it cheap, I'll probably pick it up and run through it in an afternoon or so. I don't remember. I don't think it's too difficult. I could probably finish it in a day or so. But another great game. They showed off a whole. I'm not going to get the video now, but they showed off a whole litany of indie games in one go. So many. A few other games got their own little trailer. Ashen, Code Vein, Tacoma. I missed that one. Um, Cuphead got a release date. I don't know what it is. Loads of games were shown that I can't even talk about them all. 
I can barely talk about the ones that I have on my list. I don't know if you can tell, my voice is kind of going. Three games left that I want to talk about. I only have footage for two of them. The Last Night. I don't know what this is. You can see it on your screen. It looks like a cross between Inside and Hotline Miami with like the side-scrolling gameplay and the 80s retro graphics, kind of. But it looks great. It looks really mysterious, kind of dark. And I'm curious to see what... I'm sure I want to see more of this. This is one of the games I'm really excited for. But... Uh, they didn't really give us a whole lot. I don't know when it's coming out, but it has a lot of promise, and I can't wait to see more of this game. Uh, the last minor game I have on the list, I only really want to talk about it because it looks like another game I love. It was Super Lucky's Tale, and it's kind of weird looking. It was just a little fox. Like, I don't know the character. It's not an established franchise, but what struck me about the game and the presentation and the music was how much it looked like Mario Galaxy. Now... If I get a bootleg, even a bootleg Mario Galaxy is better than most games. If I get a bootleg Mario Galaxy on Xbox One, mind blown. Like, I need that in my life. So, if I can get this, and it's good, 100% to play it. Because platformer is always pretty fun to play. So, the last game I want to talk about, I don't have gameplay for. Because the presentation was like 10 minutes, and then I couldn't find a trailer for it. So, um, I'll just loop the... Scorpio footage at the start, and then I'm gonna have to call it Scorpio for a while. It's like I still call the Switch the NX, but um, it was Anthem from BioWare, which is basic. They're the makers of Mass Effect, and this game is basically the reason why Mass Effect Four looked kind of bad. Or not bad, just average. Where they're normally excellent. The game is like a third-person Destiny, but better. If that makes sense, I, did, I didn't see any looting in it. But I'm assuming there is like raid boss runs like Borderlands and Destiny and stuff. Um, looked fun. Again, they didn't show a whole lot. So from, like a lot of these games are just like, look at this pretty thing. Will you buy it later after we've shown you more stuff? The E3 is just announcements mostly. So it's kind of difficult to talk about this stuff. Especially for fucking 12 minutes. But it looked really promising. Uh, Bioware has a pretty good track record. I don't think they've ever made a game that was received badly. Like certain games like Dragon Age 2 and um, Mass Effect 4 and I suppose 3 as well have gotten like negative backlash but none of the games are bad so this is going to be at least like at least a B or maybe probably an A plus like it's Bioware so we should be pretty good and the last thing I want to talk about from the conference it's not a game and that's why I'm going to keep the Scorpio footage going but it was Xbox One and Xbox One X are now backwards compatible with original Xbox games, which is kind of weird. I don't even know if it's necessary because most of those games have been traded in. But for the people that have them, that's really cool. Uh, they announced a game called Crimson Skies that will be on it. I don't know that what it is. that's all before my time. Um, it looked cool. Like that's a good feature. It doesn't affect me too much because, like I said, I'm like before my time. I started with three sixty. But this is another feather in Xbox's cap because Sony hand is not handling backwards compatibility very well. So I don't think they even have it. I think they have like you buy the game again for like cheaper or something if you already own it. I don't know, something like that. But yeah, props to Microsoft. This is a good addition. And that's going to bring the conference to an end. Uh, there's a lot of games. I'm going to link um, Xbox's YouTube channel in the description so you can go and look at these yourself. I uh, hope the video did them justice. I had to fly through this because one, I've already recorded it, and two, the conference is so long that it was overwhelming. Like, I couldn't talk about everything. It would just be boring. So I tried to fly through this as quickly as possible. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to hit, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this one. I kind of wish I was more animated about it, but I'm just doing it like a report because, I mean, the trailer's going to be behind me, so I feel like you're going to be watching them more than watching me anyway. So it's not really a big deal. But, um, yeah, this message is brought to you by Senior Vehicle 473, stamped, sealed, and approved. I will see you guys again next time.